Hasty Book Summary 4 Find Your Focus Zone by Lucy Jo Palladino The tools you need to get and stay inside Lucy Jo Palladino's focus zone. In this book, Palladino gives us tools and tips to stay inside the focus zone and how to adjust yourself when you feel under stimulation or overstimulation. The focus zone is often referred to as the flow or the peak performance and is the mental state wherein you lose track of time and find complete focus on the one goal you are trying to accomplish. Strategies to keep attention. We want to get and stay inside Lucy Joe Palladino's focus zone because it will help us reach goals. Controlling where you focus your attention on is an important skill in reaching these goals and it's needed to be healthy, happy and successful. There are different stages to keep attention on the things you are focusing on. The current culture causes for a lot of subconscious distractions because of technology, but we have less time for ourselves than needed. To keep paying attention, you must get rid of all these distractions around you. By doing this, you can stay attention. inside with the ability zone. to stay inside the focus zone. You can also become more aware of how you look at people and how you can interact with them. Attention is powerful. It can be used to reward and support because what we decide to focus our attention on will grow and flourish. Selective attention is the foundation of rapid cognition, which causes you to distinct only relevant stimuli, which is a useful skill inside the focus zone and sustain attention, which is needed in the long term. Selective attention often uses orienting response, which is a safety switch in our brain, part of our survival mechanics. The orienting response takes your ability to make a selective choice and to sustain your own attention. When we receive too much information, we get stuck and our brain shuts down. This is also called a cognitive overload. This can happen, for example, when we need to make a choice which consists out of too many options. Use an active mental filter as you go through your day to filter out unwanted distractions and options and to stay inside your focus zone. Above and under the focus zone. On one end, we have arousal and adrenaline, which cause for excitement, which in turn causes for more excitement, also called overstimulation. The other side works in the same way. When you are inside the focus zone, the amount of stimulation is in perfect balance, also called relaxed alert state. Performance is often seen as attention and arousal is often seen as stimulation. Other names of the relaxed alert state are peak performance, flow. Imagine the focus zone as a graph with in the horizontal the amount of arousal and in the vertical the attention. Now visualize a parabolic shape or an upside down capital U and you can imagine what the relation between arousal and performance is. Where the graph reaches its highest point, this is the point of optimal arousal or relaxed alert state. Optimal arousal is the area under the curve from the highest point minus 10% and plus 10%. This area is called the individual zone of optimal functioning. Recognizing your state. Inside the focus zone, the state of optimal arousal causes for an ideal level of drive. The level of excitement that is optimal depends on the specific situation you are in. Palladino gives us several ways of recognizing being in the focus zone by total concentration, deep involvement, a sense of challenge, losing track of time and feeling relaxed. There is an unhealthy variant of the focus zone, which almost looks the same, which is being hyper-focused, which can feel like an addiction. Because of the hyper-focus, adrenaline builds, which makes you focus intensely, keeping a tight grip and not paying any attention to anything else. Working in the focus zone, however, or at your peak performance, has been described as 
balance and joy, which is made up of openness, flexibility and freedom of thought. To distinct the two, you can look at different attributes of a person, frustrating reactions and interruptions for a good cause. Using simple methods to remove bad interruptions will help you with your self-control. Simple methods include keeping a visual reminder to remind yourself of the activity you are supposed to do, will help you regain control after any interruption. Also, self-talk can help you with getting back to work. Fascination is another tool to help you out of your interruption. Not only these three tools can help you regain control. Adjusting your adrenaline level will help you control your focus zone. Accept loss of control. With the help of your thoughts, feelings and actions, you can change your adrenaline level to a comfortable level. To stay at a comfortable level, you first have to recognize you are about to lose control. Accept it, then adjust it. Losing control happens in different ways. Examples are procrastination is an example of feeling underpowered, but in reality having too much adrenaline. Being overwhelmed by pressure will pump adrenaline and a fight or flight response will be triggered. Self-criticism. Self-talk can often do more harm than good. Doubting our abilities and actions can get you right out of the comfort zone. Examples are, I should. Knowing the core of the problem will help you regain control. For example, a fight or flight response can also be caused by procrastination, anxiety and anger or intensity. Adjusting losing control. Both the fight or flight response and norepinephrine have these previously mentioned problems in common. The root of the mentioned cases of losing control is often fear. Fear is also the cause for self-doubt, which in turn causes the dislike for tasks. And this often results in not only self-doubt but procrastination. Knowing this can help you to focus on either adding or reducing stimuli to get back into the focus zone. To get more stimulated, you focus on doing more activities to add stimulation. The opposite counts for overstimulation. These activities or stimulants can either be good or bad to adjust our level of stimulation. Use mindful multitasking to improve your level of arousal, meaning based on reason and strategy. Focusing your sustained attention on one thing at a time is called your undivided attention. Multitasking is the opposite, doing a lot of small tasks at the same time. Your brain doesn't do two things at the same time. Instead, it switches really fast between activities, which comes with a total reduction of speed compared to first completing one task fully before moving on to the next task. Realize that adjusting your behavior takes time and you have to be patient. So be persistent, have lots of self-encouragement and instantly self-forgiveness for the new habits you are trying to build. Learning makes for new habits and helps the plasticity of the brain develop. For this sustained attention is required. An example is meditation, which calls for sustained attention. By making something a habit, you can take away the fear or excitement you have for the particular subject. Habits solidified by repeated practice are practices to change and often are permanent for life. The changeability of a brain is called the brain's plasticity. Effective exposure therapy is done so you can make reasonable informed decisions. To take care of the self-doubt, you have to build confidence by easier tasks which likely lead to success and or sensing your own success by the effort and value you give it, you can increase self-confidence. Palladino also gives more specific examples of how to get back in control. To adjust procrastination, repeating your personal goals over and over will help you overcome it. Because instead of repeating self-critic, 
Re replay that which we want to accomplish in our head. Also reminding yourself of previously personal successes can help fight procrastination and your inner critic. Using emotional words or names of friends and family also are of influence on your concentration and problem solving skills and gives a boost in both. These all help with positive self affirmation. You can for example do this by writing a note to yourself in a moment you feel strong and read it at a later moment when you need more strength. Your attitude can make a big difference because you are the only one that controls your attitude. Structure. Breaking down big tasks in smaller blocks makes them seem more manageable. These manageable blocks can be structured in such a way that it doesn't cause for extra pressure. With structure you can make every step towards your goal more doable and make the fear disappear. This is one part of powerful self-direction where you can also use concise verbs to help yourself out. Use actionable words related to the topic you are busy with. Use a setup that is efficient and ergonomically correct. Saying no to distractions is important to stay in the focus zone. This can be done by assertively and calmly saying no to anyone entering while you are focused on your activity. Because of your assertiveness to say no, the fear of missing out, FOMO, guilt and your habits to be selfless can be trained to the point quick and nicely without apologies or detailed explanations is the best way to communicate. Dealing with emotions. The first step to dealing with emotions like anxiety and fear, but also worry and guilt, is to identify them with your conscious mind as rational or irrational. When you identify an emotion as rational, write a plan on how to deal with it. The plan has to be doable, specific and positive. Another technique you can use in dealing with your emotions is rescripting. Rescripting Reframing is substituting a thought or activity in order to make it better. You might want to rescript your thoughts or activities, for example, in moments of high emotions. To choose to rescript or not depends mostly on if it is relevant now, can you do something about it in this very moment. In the heat of a moment when you feel provoked or intense, it is important to only state facts. Talk only about how you feel, try to see the situation from the other person's point of view and ask for what you would want. Being self-aware is an important feature to get into the focus zone. Recognizing your emotional state and what you are feeling and possibly adjusting them is a skill that becomes very helpful. While you can't adjust your feeling, you can adjust your thoughts, which in turn adjust your feelings. You need this emotional control to keep yourself inside the focus zone. Dependent on your emotional state is how we see and interact with our environment. To be aware of your internal state, you can observe yourself. Self-awareness. To be self-aware is to see yourself like in a mirror for your internal state. An observer self, also called being mindful, is like looking at yourself from a distance and realizing how you see your environment. Being mindful about your thoughts and feelings means that you completely realize the emotion and instead of reacting out, you have the time to notice it and consider how to use it. The observer self only looks at things objectively without judging or commentary. You can score your emotional state in daily situations by keeping track of your adrenaline. This adrenaline score can make you become more self-aware. Realize that failures often bring self-criticism, but instead of allowing for that, see every failure as a step of your efforts to learn and succeed. Realize that making a mistake means that you tried and that you got yourself out of your comfort zone. Your focus zone is often bigger than your comfort zone. Power break. In moments you have nothing to think about, your brain will focus on underlying anxieties. So, you need to relieve these pressures sometimes, so taking the time not to be busy. 
The best thing to relieve yourself is a power break, making a commitment to go back to work after you finish. Anything from water in your face to changing your environment can be part of your power break. Essentially, a power break is a strategic, consciously chosen moment to take a limited time off the activity you are doing. Sleeping is a natural power break to return to being alert, refreshed and in your focus zone. Focus on having a good night rest by doing the following. Don't drink caffeine too late or too much. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day and don't receive high stimulation before bed. So, create a bedtime ritual which is low stim with relaxing music or a book. Palladino goes a little deeper into the benefits of different power breaks. Firstly, caffeine in moderation can improve your alertness. If you drink smaller amounts throughout the day, this is more effective than a big one in the morning. Furthermore, video games can help you out with becoming more logical, better in abstract reasoning and coordination skills when used in moderation. Opposite to television, which wastes time and numbs your mind, also often weakens the family bond. Exercise is known to reduce stress chemicals and can improve your capacity to stay calm and focused. It also helps to replenish brain chemicals that you need for mental clarity. Meditation is another practice you can use to improve your daily focus. Positive self-talk and receiving gratitude are other tools to defeat stress and promote serotonin, which basically counters stress. Having friends that structure and balance their lives too will help you out with yours. They can also help you when you need to vent, but be sure to limit this to for example 10 minutes. A buddy system, working together with a friend, is effective in making people follow through. Lastly, thinking about the future, where you are going instead of where you've been, can help you with staying focused. By following through and finishing your work, you can then focus on the next goal at hand. But don't punish yourself for not finishing or starting more than you finish. Instead, appreciate the effort you did and understand yourself. Teaching your next generation. Guiding your children as they learn and grow will only happen if they trust you and feel support. To teach them self-control and the attention skill, a parent is in a perfect position as the child's primary teacher. It can help you if you reflect on effectiveness of the methods you use and how they influence your child. Rewarding at the right moment will help your child to learn the attention skill. The self-affirmation you use can also be used on your child to support the progress. When your child makes a bad choice, don't punish him for it. Instead, help him reflect on how to make a better choice the next time and then practice the steps towards this better choice, not forgetting to also reward this improvement. Make sure that as a parent, you keep all the basic requirements needed for your own best, also for your child, like the right food, exercise, friends and freedom. And sticking with decisions you made consistently is important to children. Make sure to focus on your child's strength, like his abilities, talents and efforts. Paladino helps us regain control of our lives and staying focused on our long-term goals by these tools and definitions of important subjects which are directly of influence on your focus zone. Accepting that you make mistakes and often find yourself out of your controlled focus zone is the best way to support yourself to get back in. You have come to the end of this summary by Hasty Book. For all new summaries be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow social medias in the link below to stay updated. We'd love to hear from you, so leave us a rating and comment and see you next time at Hasty Book.